Welcome to the March 1st board meeting where we will talk about the proposed budget for the 23-24 school year. On January 24th, we presented a preview of the 23-24 um, budget. Today, we will be presenting my proposed budget for next school year. This is an overview, and I just want to emphasize that it is an overview because we plan to use the next two board meetings, March 14th and March 28th, to go over the budget in detail by school, by department, and by function. I always want to start everything by grounding our work and our mission. A budget reflects the values of the district and helps us achieve our mission. In this budget, you will see that uh, we have maintained the quality and quantity of our academic programs, and we also have maintained a focus on ensuring that the learning community is safe and supportive. And lastly, we really maintain the ability of our students to explore their individual passions, all of which require resources in the form of our budget. In addition to being aligned with our mission, my proposed budget supports the six strategies in our strategic plan. We will continue to invest in professional learning and pursue staff that reflect the values of the district and are the very best. We will remain committed to ensuring we are differentiating, that we are meeting the needs of each student and ensuring that they are future ready. We will also continue to invest in new personnel and services that provide emotional, social, and physical wellness for our students. In the world of communication, our resources will remain dedicated to home, school, and community communication pathways. We will make additional investments in next year's budget in ensuring our schools are safe environments for learning. And lastly, we will embrace our partnerships and seek new ones to further our goals in this budget. While the mission and strategies provide overarching long-term areas of focus, there are several ongoing and changing contributory factors to a school budget. John, you want to run through these? Yes. So to get to the center part, which is the adopted budget, there are three groups of contributory factors. The first one is the yellow, yellow circle. That's the negotiations. And obviously, for a school district, the negotiation part is very, very important because that involves both the salaries and also the benefits. And that represents over 70% of our total budget. Uh, fortunately for us, next year, uh, for next year's budget, we don't have any negotiations right now. Our next negotiation is really for the 24-25 uh, school budget. And the second group is the grade area. That is the input from external and internal groups. For example, you know, the, the, um, uh, the, the Board of Education meetings, you know, if anyone talk about it. I, I remember not this year, but last year when we had a uh, student uh, group, they, they actually had a pitch, they, they talk about the budget. And the third group is the, the pink ones. And that's the, the mandates, the federal, the state laws, the regulations, and all these factors, they contribute to the budget, and that's how we ultimately put the budget together. Thank you. Since this is an overview, I wanted to provide a few high-level items the 23-24 budget will accomplish. The budget will support the four pillars of a school budget, which include class size, program, infrastructure, and contractual obligations. So we'll continue our instructional program improvement, which provides depth and breadth of course offerings and extracurricular activities. Thank you. Um, second, it provides a safe and supportive learning environment. So you know that our district goal this year is on safety. We've done a lot of audits. We've done a lot of work. And we're going to continue to pursue some of these 
things that have come up that we want to make improvements on in and as part of next year's budget. You'll hear a little bit more about those when Mr. Chamberlain does the facilities budget and we talk about some of the ways that we're gonna use funds next year to improve uh, the safe and supportive learning environment. In terms of the necessary personnel, um, you know, safety has multiple parts besides the physical safety. There's the social and the emotional safety that we want to make sure that our students have when they're in our schools. Um, so we're putting in different personnel uh, that we're moving from grant funded positions into the general fund to make sure that we can ensure the positions that support our students. In addition to that, we have, um, last year we worked a lot in the world of technology. First, in expanding support services for students, and second, in strengthening, updating, and expanding technology infrastructure. These are both areas that we're gonna continue to support with the 23-24 budget in terms of how we're ensuring that the technology, again, the first slide that I talked about with the mission talked about being future ready to make sure that our children have tools and that our teachers have tools in their hands that they can use to access different types of information, that we have the infrastructure appropriate for them and that we're doing everything that we can to keep them safe while they're on their devices. Um, and lastly, um, this budget is albeit slightly just below the tax cap. So what the budget looks like for 23-24 is a $59,321,688 budget. This is a budget change of 2.79 increase from the current school year's budget. It is a 2.43% tax levy change and that is, as I said, just slightly under the allowable tax cap of 2.44%. I will turn it over to John to talk about some of the challenges that we had in developing the 23-24 budget. I just want to add one thing to the, um, the tax cap part. Because this is below the tax cap and therefore we are just seeking a simple majority vote. We just have to have 50% plus one. And so when we come to the challenges, uh, last time when we talked about it, there were uh, four items, but now we are down to three. Obviously, the inflation is still a major factor because the inflation, for example, last year was 8% and our tax cap is only at 2%. Even this year, the uh, inflation is still running high. And the health insurance premium, we only know the 20 calendar year 2023 uh, uh, premium increase is at 14.5%. And right now, we don't know what it's going to be next year. And our problem is half of the 2024 premium increase is going to be in the 23-24 budget. And that is the uniqueness of when we are part of the NICE, NICE ship uh, insurance plan. And then, of course, the energy cost is still a major unknown. Um, you know, the cost has come down a little bit. But right now, we really don't know what is in store for uh, the future, especially for next year. So now here we talk about the known impact uh, for the 23-24, um, the budget. And uh, you, re you remember at the budget preview time, we already presented this. But you can see that this list is getting longer because there are some of the unknowns that get got moved into the, the known. And just want to let you know the last item, the debt service, when we prepared a budget presentation up to yesterday, it was still on the unknown. But this morning, uh, it became known. And uh, Dr. Desai is going to report later on. And, but we know the debt service uh, amount now, so that becomes known. So here are the items that uh, we know. For example, the projected uh, enrollment, we're going to see a slight decrease. And uh, you're going to hear that part when the, the schools are presenting their budget. They're going to talk about the enrollment. 
And then the employment contracts, um, like I said earlier, we're not going into negotiation uh, for next year, so all the contracts are known. And uh, retirement ERS is at 13.2%, and the CPI we know is at 8%, but for tax cap calculation is at 2%. Uh, assessment growth factor is at 0 0.53 percent, and health insurance premium for 2023 is at 14.5 percent. And the state aid is known. Uh, we are very thankful, grateful that uh, we are getting an increase. And the TRS system, the TRS increase we already know is at 9.76 percent, which is a slight decrease from 10.29 percent. And then our tax cap at the earlier slide, you saw it was at 2.44%. And the debt service, the last unknown piece that was, became known this morning was this is the, the bond, that $2 million bond that we have to borrow for the middle school uh, HVAC project. Mm -hmm. And uh, John, so one of the things with all the advocacy, for example, that comes up in this slide, projected enrollment, right? The tax cap doesn't usually they, that's one of the, the task cap revision we're looking to um, account for enrollment growth like right now you said we're going to be a little bit down but some districts are, are going up and the tax cap doesn't allow for enrollment growth in the calculation right? my concern about that it, it sounds right my concern is that a lot of things cut both ways uh, if you advocate for growth what about if you have a reduction what do you do so right so you're right, but that's something that they're um, fighting for. They, yeah. you know, they. Well, well, you know, just for, for example, you, you know, a lot of things. Uh, the the problem is that New York State is very large. You know, you have seven hundred school districts. A lot of school districts are very different from each other. For example, for the uh, foundation aid, our district, we are very grateful because we were shortchanged. So we got it. Uh, we got a large increase, mm -hmm. for example, you know, three years. But there are s some school districts, they have enrollment decrease, and they were, in the theory, they are overpaid. And therefore, you know, there's a clause in, in the, 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 the um, governor's proposed budget is, is that, you know, you're going to be uh, safe harmless. Mm -hmm. So that means you're not going to see a reduction, right. and you'll guarantee a 3% increase. So, you know, it all depends. You know, right now, it's very difficult when you lump all 700 school districts together. One thing is not going to fit all. Mm -hmm. right. that, that's my concern about the enrollment, because, you know, what about the flip side? You know, if you have a growth, yes, I think you should get more. And they are going to get more foundation aid because of the enrollment. Enrollment has the, um, foundation aid has enrollment factor in there. But, you know, mm -hmm. the tax cap is another story. Yeah. I'm going to touch on the tax cap later also. Yeah. You, you will see that. Thanks. And so the debt service is known now. So we still have four items that are unknown, but, uh, you know, we are doing our best projections uh, to put in the budget. The first one is a special ed placement, both for the in-district as well as out of district. Right now we are going through annual reviews, and so there are a lot of unknowns there. Uh, but, you know, um, you will hear from the uh, special ed director when she presents the budget that they are projecting out. Okay. And then we have tuition students, that part of it is still unknown. And uh, transportation cost. Um, the transportation cost, there are several factors. One is obviously the out of district placements. And then also another piece is the CPI number. Our contract calls for CPI increase, but that CPI is different from the tax cap CPI. The, tax, uh, the CPI for transportation is using the CPI from June 1st of 2022 to um, May 31st, 2023. So we don't know that number until June, around June 15. Then obviously the health insurance premium, we don't know what it's gonna be for 2024. But we know it's gonna be an increase for sure. John, is there an inverse correlation between the increases in the pension plans versus the, the Fed rate? 
as the Fed rate goes up, or there's no correlation? No, no correlations. They are totally independent. I'll turn this back to Dr. Tsai. And just on the, did you do the last note about health insurance premiums? So the health insurance premiums run on the calendar year. So we know the 2023, but we don't know the 2024, and obviously our school budget goes through um, January to the end of June of 2024. There are several uh, personnel changes that we're excited about in this budget. Um, at BRS, we will be adding two teaching assistants to support special education programming at BRS. And in terms of pupil personnel services, also known as student support services, we have, as you know, a .5 school psychologist that we were using grant funding for. We are bringing that .5 school psychologist into the general fund and adding .5 FTE to that. We already tried to do that this year in order to secure a person for the vacancy that when we weren't getting applicants for the position at .5, we increased it to a 1.0, a full-time position. And we are still looking for a person for that. So we are taking that and we are bringing it into the general fund. We are also bringing the SEL counselor that we currently have from being grant funded, and this is the final year of the grant, into the general fund. So they're kind of tricky to explain because they are budget increases, but they're not necessarily changes in personnel, the psychologist kind of, because we're adding to it and creating it as a 1.0. And again, this goes back to what I was saying before about that safe, and supportive environment for our kids and really making sure that we have the necessary personnel in order to be able to get to some of our strategies and our mission. And I'll turn it back over to you, uh, John, to talk about the budget expenditures. Okay. So here is the proposed budget expenditure in these large categories. And uh, so I would just go over very quickly uh, so the salaries increase is base, basically based on the, the contracts, even including the most recently amended um, teacher aid contracts. And then also the employee benefit, you see a very large increase. This is because of the 14.5% increase. And the 14.5% is really just for the current employees. For the retirees, the increase is even larger. And therefore, we see it increasing uh, employee benefits of um, over a million dollars. And the equipment basically is the same as you see a very small increase in the supply. And then the utility, uh, I, think is, um, I think, is expected because we all know when we go to the gas pump, we know it's going up. And uh, that's why we are seeing an increase. I, I just tell you, that originally this number was even higher. And, uh, but because we saw the number was coming down a little bit, and so uh, Steve Chamberlain has adjusted the budget a little bit, so, but we still see an increase of 42%. Uh, and then the debt service, this is a new debt that we're taking on for the middle school uh, HVAC project. And then the contractual. Uh, contractual mainly is two categories. One is uh, special education and the other one is technology. And at the next board meeting on the 14th, you will hear from the two, um, two administrators. To, they will specifically talk about this. And then the BOCES is, um, two, we see a $210,000 increase. Um, that is because you know, the increase inflation and uh, we are using more services. And the interfund transfer, you see a large decrease. And this is the flip side of what we presented last year. Last year we presented because we needed the funds for the HVAC project. Now we don't need that money and therefore, and we don't have any more money to bring it in and therefore you see a reduction of one point, close to $1.9 million. And so this is still the budget expenditures. It's just putting a different way and to present in a way, this, the reason we like to present this way is because you will see which, 
what each category represent of the total budget. And the most important part is that the salaries and the employee benefits because combined, because this is a service industry, and so combined is all 70, over 70% 70 of our budget is devoted to personnel related. And so that's over 70%. That's really the, the big takeaway from this slide. So now we go to the proposed budget for the revenues. And revenues, um, you know, Dr. Desardi mentioned earlier that the real property taxes increase is 2.43 is below the tax cap, and that is the number that is going to be uh, matched against the tax, tax cap, and uh, whether you're below or over. And then the uh, state and federal sources, really mainly is for state, this is the state aid, we see a very large increase, over $2 million, and that's basically the foundation aid. And then you see the appropriation of fund balance, we have reduction because coming back against the HVAC, Part. And the tax revenue, uh, the economy is actually going well, and therefore this is the uh, uh, sales tax, the county sales tax. We, even for this year, we anticipate an increase, um, higher, we are receiving higher uh, revenue, tax revenue than our original budget, but we are confident that next year we'll get o over $950,000 in uh, sales tax. And then the charges for services, this is for uh, tuition that we take in. And uh, you will hear about this when we uh, present the budget uh, next, next, at the next board meeting. And then miscellaneous um, revenues, that's really the catch-all that's for facilities use and various other um, items. And uh, the total increase is 2.79, that's the same as the um, expenditure budget. So here we talk about uh, the percentage and so the key takeaway is really the real property taxes is still around 67, 68 percent. And that is not unlike most of the Westchester's uh, school district. Um, basically property taxes is represent the majority of the, uh, the tax revenue. And so here comes the re more recent um, budgets. Here we're showing several years. And uh, the one point that I want to talk about is there is an advocacy uh, item for different groups. And one is the um, carryover unused tax cap. So here I, I will tell you for for our next year budget, we really don't have that much money left on the, on the table. It's just several thousand dollars. So because it's between 2.43 and 2.44%. But if you look at our current year budget, uh, tax levy change is 1.72%. And our tax cap was at 2.11. So there is money left over there. And the year before, the 21-22, and the tax levy change is 0 0.59 and the tax cap was at 2.55, uh, 2.22 percent. Right. So there are quite a bit of money there. And so, so I, I, I know, I think the School Board Association is advocating for, yeah. for, for that part, you know, the carry over, you can continue to carry over. But coming back to one size doesn't fit all, this will help, I think, wealthier school districts because if you think about the more upstate school district, their tax levy represent maybe 20, 30% of their, their total budget. They don't even have enough money there to, to cover um, the, the, their, their, their uh, revenue. So, so I'm not sure that would help them. So that is the, always a struggle, you know, upstate, downstate, downstate, and you know, the Long Island, Westchester versus other, other parts. But it's one thing that it, it wouldn't, of, of all the topics to advocate for, because you're right, Northern New York might not want to uh, join in, the, in that discussion. But this wouldn't hurt them. There would be nothing against them supporting having this uh, change to the uh, tax levy. To, to, even if it's 
one or you know a couple of years where that money could be used, uh, you know, saved for the following year. Wouldn't hurt northern districts to support this change, even though their benefit is minimal, because it's not going to hurt them. I think what they're going the to advocate for is that they will want more, even more state aid in the future. Because right now, if everyone's made whole, right, and uh, so. I think with the current governor, he, she is basic, not guaranteeing, but I, I'm hearing the word guaranteeing that every year there will be inflation right. uh, number fixing. So this is the calculation of our tax cap. Um, it, it shows you that the tax cap is at two, the total increase is 2.437%. And uh, our, proposed tax levy is just below that. So we are under the tax cap. So I turn this over to Dr. Thank you. So as we have said a couple of times this evening, our next two presentation, our next two board meetings in March will be um, filled with lots of budget presentations. On the 14th, we'll have the three schools as well as special education and technology do presentations. And the following March meeting on the 28th, we'll have athletics, um, O&M, non-instructional revenue tax cap, and the contingency budget presentations. Then we'll move into April, where we'll have the adoption of the budget. We'll move into May, where, we'll have the we'll, we'll ha where we will have the hearing, and then um, end up with a um, budget vote. So all of this will happen in the next three months. And we just want to encourage everyone um, out in the community that we know March, April, and May will go by very quickly. So if you have any comments, we absolutely welcome them. We have information for our district clerk, Donna Vitucci, myself as your superintendent, and Mr. Chow, our assistant superintendent for business. Thank you. Thank you so much.